I thought I'm face to face with the devil. And I'm speaking to you because as you leave this college, as you continue with studies, there are situations that will come in your life that you have never seen before. And you will need a quick revelation of how you're going to handle it. I started speaking in tongues. One of the things that you do when you don't know what to pray, you speak in the spirit. You pray in the spirit. And tonight I'm going to be praying for you shortly to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And at that moment, the man looked at me straight in the eye. And he started smiling. He stood at the only exit route that there was by the river. And I was face to face with a challenge, a serious challenge. This man had drowned us in a sack. And he demanded that I eat them. And they were all. We faced each other. And I asked him, I remember Jesus asking the man, who are you? And I said the same words. Who are you? And he said, I am a demon. I was baptized in the guy crater. He said, the things I'm hearing here is strange, strange. And I said, man, guy, do you know Jesus? And he said, Jesus, the one who eats eggs. Oh my goodness. How many people? We are not communicating. And he's not moving out of the way. There is a danger because there is a huge pool of water next to me. And if we enter into a physical tunnel, he was a strong man, man. And quickly, now I thought, what do I do? I, I thought now. Sorry. Let me preach to him, not knowing how he's going to respond. And I started telling him, there is one who is called the Lord Jesus Christ. He has power over heaven and power over the earth. He is in me and he's going to get into you. I was just speaking, trying to carry the show. The man was smiling and eating his brothers. Wanted to see situations serious situations that you might face as you continue with your walk with the Lord. And I felt the Holy Spirit coming upon me and I continued speaking. And I thought, let me ask this man, do you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior? And he said, yes. I told him, leave that. He knelt. When he knelt, I thought, do I escape or do I pray for him? <laughs> because at least, at last, I've got a way out. And I, I said, I'm going to pray for this man to test whether we were communicating. Nikamwambia, Rudia, New Miami. Sabapona is, he said, Bona is, I go to Kapapona. I led him in a repentance prayer. And right there, he received Jesus as his Lord and Savior. And he became sober. There's something that is telling me, are you really doing that? What are you doing? And I'm looking for an opportunity to end this. But the man received Christ. I asked him, do you know any pastor around here? He told me, I know Pastor Makisha. There is a pastor called Makisha in that area. And I told him, run to him right now and tell him what has happened. He's going to lead him. And how are you going to live your life? Off he rushed into the bush. And I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I picked my watch, went back to college and said, I will never go out of college alone. But I knew God had sent me to lead that man to the Lord. I never knew what exactly had happened to that man. But one time, Later, about a month later, I was walking around the town of Marcelo and somebody greeted me and told me, praise the Lord, it was a man I could see, maybe I have seen him, but I have not seen him. 
He was shaken. When he opened his mouth, this is when I saw the tear. And remember, this is the man I prayed for. But he was well shaken, clothed well, carrying a jelly cup of water. And I asked him, Are you a Bima? He said, Yes, you prayed for me to receive Christ at the river. Uh, God has done mighty things in my heart. I am now a transformed man. Hallelujah. Still remember that miracle. And I still praise the Lord for that miracle. Now he was in water business. He was fetching water for the residents of a settled town. And even today, he is a very organized man. Praise the Lord. We serve a God who is able to reveal to you something suddenly. I pray for a sudden revelation upon you. In what you're facing right now, that God is going to show you the way out. Hallelujah. Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10 13 that nothing has happened to you that is uncommon to man. And God is faithful. He will provide a way of escape for you. Hallelujah. I declare in the name of Jesus, every mist, every darkness that is before you, that is going to be invaded by the light of God tonight. And you're going to see the way out in the name of Jesus. I saw many miracles in the town of Marcelo. One time I was standing by the road. The Spirit of God told me of a man who was coming on a bike. About 500 meters away, I felt something telling me this man is going to receive Christ as his Savior. Those who are many years ago, it was in the 90s. That is when I was in college. In the 90s, at that time, it was rare to see people in dreadlocks. It was rare. Those days, although now it's acceptable, and then we have no problem. We have moved in different places, and we know that it's not about our dressing. It's about our relationship with God. But that man had, uh, had dreadlocks uh, in, in, in his head, and I stopped him, and he did like this. There's a way um, somebody can be scared with dreads, you know. When you throw them ahead like this, and they are all over the place, and he's looking at you, why have you stopped him? I told him, you need Jesus. You need to receive Christ, as he said. I saw him never down, right there by the roadside. He received Christ as he said. And something told me, this is not what I want to be thinking, but I told him, would you want your life to be different? He said, I have been a Rastafari, but now I want to be a Christian. One of the things that I want to do, I want to shame my dreadlocks. And he said, so that I renounce that faith that I had, pay for me, so that I be saved and shamed today. And I, I prayed for him, and he was saved and shamed and went more clean on the head and in the heart. Give God a hand for our prayer. Amen. Still in Western Kenya, praise the Lord. I want you to know God reveals quick, quick, quick solutions. Amen. We were at a place called Behinga. We were preaching Jesus. And there was an opposition we were feeling. And so we went around the villages, praying, and trusting God that He would reveal to us exactly how we were to do the mission there. And we reached a place, we started asking people whether they know of a witch doctor around that place. If you hear somebody asking you, do you know any witch doctor around? He was so feared that nobody could point at his own like this. They were showing us with their lips. Humble. <laughs> and I was with two brothers. We walked into, I've never been to a witch doctor's uh, house. How many people have visited a witch doctor? My hand is up because I visited a witch doctor. I know some of you have gone, tried to pass examinations, but you will fail with your letter. Ah, uh, now, listen to me. 
So I enter the witch doctor's house. In the witch doctor's house, there are no chairs. A mat here and a mat here. It was a three room house. And I had carried some anointing oil in my, in my pocket. And I started saying, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over this house. We thought he was in, but he was not in. Are you happy he was not in? So he said, because we have stepped in, we shall come back in the middle of the night. And he did that night. We went. And when we touched the gate, which was like 20 meters away, it was total darkness. But we heard his voice from the house saying, Higher, higher. What do you want to have a child in your house? I want to tell you that we serve a God who is greater than any power out there. Praise the Lord. He who is in me is greater than he who is in the world. Talk to your neighbor, tell them, do you believe it? He who is in me is greater than he who is in the world. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. This is the power you are going to proclaim as you go home. Where And so we, we got into the house and we found him seated. There was a naked woman in front of him and in between was all manner of paraphernalia that you've ever brought off. I could see a star, a bone here, a lot of hair, arrows, things that were there and pictures of people. I'm helping you. I'm helping you because how many have not been in a witch doctor's house? Praise the Lord. Ah, uh, praise the Lord. Uh, I've seen about that. That hands are black. I'm uh, sure I know. God is helping you tonight. It's your night of deliverance. Now listen to me. The woman was just here. She started going back. She has never seen a witch doctor confronted. We came in. As far as I know, throughout college, I'm the type that all times, the boring type. In fact, we were so boring to girls. You know, one of them looked at me one day said, A tie and a suit, 35 degrees, you're crazy. Okay. So we met touch. Three young men wearing suits and ties in front of the windows. We said to him, we have come to tell you of greater strength that you can use to help this woman. And we have come because we love you. He couldn't just let us speak. He had a mere voice. Some say, go to my house. It is what he impeccable swelling. And we understood this is not a prayer, this must be a Tanzania. So take it by your by hand. And we told him, before we go, we want to tell you that the power of Jesus is greater than the power that we are using. Yeah. And we mentioned Jesus, he got praised. And he demanded now by all God's good master, get out of my house. And we said, before we go, respond to us. And his response was this. He put his hand inside the heel of holes at once. <laughs> and he looked at us. Now we were waiting now for one and explosions to happen. But everybody was like, Retabo Kasakabo Kashetara. We were waiting now to see. But what he came out with was a Quran, a very clean Quran. That one day, we were Muslim. Yeah, you are Christian. 
kila mtu aabudu Mungu wake. Tukamwambia kuna Mungu mmoja na tungekwambia hivi. Pokea Yesu leo na utapata nguvu zaidi. Akakasirika. Akachukua kuta na mikuki. He reasonable. You will face things out there as you preach the gospel. And as you do your work of engineering or business, you must face a weird thing. But we quickly knew that now this confrontation is almost coming to an end. And we told him we are going. But remember those words that we have told him. That this village needs the power of Jesus. He doesn't need the power of witchcraft. And we ended there. We left. Um, people who saw us coming out thought that we'd be dead in the morning. But we slept and woke up. But a week later, he said that his altar had been interfered with. He had to migrate from that village. We don't know where he went. But deliverance came to that village. Give God a hand of prayer. Hallelujah. But we open in the book of Daniel, we will be going there. But before we get there, because uh, I want to give you the fourth testimony. I'll give you five, then we read a bit from the book of Daniel. While walking around the University of Nairobi one day, must be the spirit of God spoke to me and told me that in the future there shall be a college of that magnitude somewhere far and I shall be at the center of it having begun it. God gives you visions. Praise the Lord. Am I talking to people who have visions here? And immediately an image started coming into my head. I called an artist and told him, closing my eyes, I explained to him what I see in the spirit. How many do art here? Art and design. We have artists here. Those who draw, who draw impressions that look like real. Do we have one here? The portrait does. So he drew. What I told him, he drew very well. And I had it on my wall. And every morning, I would walk and tell that place, Reveal yourself where you are. Praise the Lord. Those who have visited me know what I'm talking about. Because that picture is still on the wall. And every morning, I would tell it, Now, show yourself where you are. I want you to be like that. There are situations you will speak to. Amen. The revelations that God has given you, you give them faith by speaking their existence in the name of Jesus. Amen. And one day, I was driving from Kijabe Hospital. I was headed to Kikui. A man stopped on the, me on the way. Those of you to Kijabe Hospital, you know the man that hill up there. Somebody stopped me. It was during Corona. And so I hesitated. And when I threw like 20 meters away, I had God telling me, give that man a lift. Give him a lift. He came. And I told him, sit behind. And he sat there, faking me. I looked at him and I could tell, this must be either a Maasai or a Sabu. And we went quiet, moving down towards Kimende. By the time we reached Kimende, the man started speaking. Mungu anani nenea. If you give somebody a lift and he starts saying that behind you. <laughs> you are on the highway. Somebody has started speaking. Mungu anani nenea. Kuna kitu alikuwa pia 
lakini ukaona ni kubwa sana hawezi kutenga anasema hivi oh, but those people are so important to have within us praise the lord and so right there i remember that image that was on the wall i got the phone very quickly flipped and showed him and he said i know this place praise the lord and check in the rear view i know this place how do you know it this is one of the things that shows that god reveals god reveals amen so he continued speaking by the time he left the car and took his contacts he arranged in his community many of all that region came together and gave us 100 hectares of land to establish that vision that I saw. Praise the Lord. That is the God that we serve. Hallelujah. The last testimony before we read the book of Daniel. My child that I told you about, who was dead for that minute, but came back to life, was stuck in India, a place called Neot in Chennai. There was no, there was no flight available, and every day there was one forty thousand to pay in the hospital. We were supposed to incur a lot of loss, but I, I told God, You have revealed to me things in the past, but even today You will reveal to me what to do. So in the night I dreamt. God reveals himself in dreams and visions. He may reveal himself even to us through messages as we speak. And I saw a man sitting on a basin, moving from one place to another. On the road. And I asked the Lord, what is this about? Something came into my mind. Check the website of Kenya Airways. And a website that did not have even one single seat left in the plane that was moving from where the hospital is to Mumbai to Nairobi. There was a three seats. Three people had cancelled their flight. Praise the Lord. That is how we got help and help other people who were stuck. There is a God who reveals secrets. Let's go to the book of Daniel. Daniel is an interesting book. And I won't be long. Daniel is an interesting book. Most of you know Daniel 1.8. When the Bible says Daniel is so in his heart, not to have to define himself. And I know you also know about Daniel 11.32. That says that they that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. The story of the book of Daniel begins Jerusalem to be invaded. God himself, you read in verse 2, you will see that Jehoiakim, who was the king then, was surrendered to Nebuchadnezzar by God himself. I want you to know that the things that you're going through, God is not far away. He is in that darkness. Praise the Lord. Now, and then that led into captivity. We see Daniel making a request that he not eat at the king's table and his request was granted. And this teaches us as people were leaving school, people were continuing with their studies. That do not be afraid even when you know that you are in a problem, make the request be known unto God. It's one thing to be in a problem, and it's another one to make a specific request. For those who are about to marry, how do they feel like it is around it now? Praise of Amen. A special blessing is coming upon you right now. Oh, oh, many hands at the back. The people in front are too holy to lift up their hands. 
You can be so many friends, men, you can be so many friends around a beautiful girl. But you're saying nothing. You're just surrendering gifts. After you just see a victim, you must make a specific request. Will you marry me? Will you marry me? So Daniel is making a specific request. The request was granted. If you move to Daniel chapter 2, I want you to uh, follow this uh, very, very closely. The king dreams and he needs an interpretation of the dream. The request of the astrologers and magicians and the man and the wise men of Babylon. And he tells them something very hard. Saints, I have a dream, but I will not tell you the dream. You will know the dream and then know the interpretation. That was a hard test for every astrologer, for every magician. And they said it's not possible. So the king got angry and said, let all magicians, the wise men, the astrologers in Babylon now be killed and their families too. This included Daniel mission. Okay? But when Daniel had this, he made another request to be given a chance to interpret the king's dream. And we see him going before the Lord in chapter 2, verse 14 to 19. And God is so faithful that when you come to him and tell him, show me how this is going to be. I still believe after you have worked hard, after you have done your best in studying, you can trust God to lead you in the areas that will be examined. Hallelujah. We serve a God who is able to direct you specifically to an area that is critical for you. So Daniel went before the Lord and he requested that he be shown the dream of the king and the interpretation of the king. And God is faithful. Verse 19, we see Daniel praising the Lord and talking to God and saying, thank you because of revealing because God revealed to Daniel what the king had dreamed and the interpretation of it. That is the God that we serve. That when death is facing you, when danger is facing you, there is a revelation that comes to you, saves you, and saves your friends, saves your family. Hallelujah. So Daniel interpreted the dream for the king. The next was when Nebuchadnezzar prayed again and Daniel interpreted the dream. But in chapter 3 there is something that is very interesting. That even after Nebuchadnezzar has seen God revealing himself through Daniel, he still put them into a test. He made an image of God. And demanded that everybody should bow to that image. We are living in a world where things will demand that you bow before them. For those of you who have been asked by relatives, you know how sometimes they demand that you bow before them. A time is coming, you will live in your own house. Praise the Lord. Some of you have bowed too low, and the devil has cheated some of you. You have sold your bodies to pay school fees. But I speak an end to that kind of a life in the name of Jesus. There is a God in heaven that God lives in our midst who is able to make a way for you where there seems to be no way. So do not be desperate. Do not do what the world is doing. But stand firm and wait on God. He does not frustrate. Praise the Lord. So Daniel is here with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They refuse to bow. Before the image of God. And the king is furious. We see him now demanding that they be thrown in the fiery 
vanish. Verse 19 shows how angry Nebuchadnezzar was. But the following verses show how the miracle happened. That when the fire was made hotter seven times, as the fire was being made hotter seven times, the grace of God was increasing more than seven times. Hallelujah. As the world is putting demands to pull you down, that grace of God is sufficient for you. Tell your neighbor, the grace of God is sufficient for you. Can you preach to the one behind you and tell them, grace of God is sufficient for you. Talk to that one and tell them, don't act desperate. The grace of God is sufficient for you. Hallelujah. into the fire. The strongest in the army were chosen. So that they put this man, they throw this man down into the fire. The Bible says that when that was done, the ones who had thrown Daniel, uh, Shadrach, Bishop, and Abednego into the fire were quickly consumed by the fire. But Daniel, Shadrach, Bishop, and Abednego was seen walking in the fire and there was a fourth man walking with them in the fire. We see that Nebuchadnezzar so astonished that the three three men I see a fourth man and the fourth man looks like the son of God. That is Jesus in the center of your fire. That is Jesus coming right in that hot fire and making it of no effect in your life. I proclaim upon your life, no matter where they throw you, Jesus is with you. No matter how tough the situation will stand against you, Christ Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, is standing right there at the center of it all. Hallelujah. The trial that you're going through is not unto death. It is to give God the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Then we move on. Something that I don't want to leave out in the book of uh, in the book of Daniel uh, is where he got the revelation that the time to be in Babylon was over. That is in chapter nine. The Bible says this in the first year of his reign. That is Darius. I, Daniel, understood my books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that they would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I pray unto the Lord my God and make my confession. The story goes on. Another revelation came to Daniel that the time prophesied by Jeremiah about the captivity has come to an end. Seventy years are over. It is time now to return to Jerusalem. That is something great. And may that happen to you that you shall understand that your time of oppression has come to an end. That you're standing at the end of your oppression. Then you stand up and claim the promises of God. That I have been delivered. I am not an accomplice. By the strength of Jesus, I am healed. Christ in me, the hope of glory. And say, now it is over. I am going into a new beginning in the name of Jesus.
days now. That was so critical. That was so critical. And we see what he did. He went into prayer. When you get a revelation, the first thing you do is seek further instruction from God. He went into prayer, into fasting, and the Lord continued revealing himself to Daniel. Hallelujah. We find him getting visions, a vision after another. Even seeing how Jesus will come, how the kingdoms will happen in the earth. We see him now in chapter 11. The verse that I want you to go home with. That the people that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. The people that know their God shall be great and they shall do exploits. I'm speaking to you tonight. Because through this message, God is sending you to do exploits in this college. God is sending you to do exploits in the world of work. God is sending you to do signs, miracles, and wonders wherever you shall be. Testimonies shall not only come from me, but testimonies shall come from, from you also. You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You will speak to the dead and they shall come back to life. Yesterday I was reading about something that Catholics uh, speak about. How many are in the Catholic Church here? You have denied your church. <laughs> there was one person called Saint Dennis. When he was one of the converts of, of Paul, through Paul, the conversion reached St. Dennis. And he started preaching repentance in France. But he was beheaded. When his head was cut, he held that head and continued preaching for six miles. The head was preaching, come to Jesus, repent ye therefore, and know that I am God. It is said, it is until he got tired that he released his head and decided by his own terms that now I'm ready to go. That is the New Testament power that we need to exhibit wherever we shall be. Praise the Lord. Some of these things are not recorded in the Bible. But they are mighty things. I'm calling upon you not to shy away to be used of God today. And we start here. Is there a pastor in our midst who has not received Jesus as their Lord and Savior? I give you this chance before I pray for the others. I give you this chance to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. I am there and you have determined today that I will be part of this team that God is going to use to do exploits. Let's pray. Let's bow our heads as we pray tonight in the name of Jesus. Bow our heads. You are here. And you know very well you have not committed your life to Jesus. You know very well that Jesus is not the Lord in your life. And you have been here and you have heard many preachers but this is a day that the Lord has made so that you make that powerful decision the greatest decision that any person can make. I will be here and you say tonight. I don't want to go to bed and say it. Raise up your hand. I'm going to pray with you right where you are. Raise up your hand. I'm going to call and I'm going to lead you into the prayer of repentance. Receive the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Do we have a person who came today? I feel there is somebody who is here in our midst today. You are not your time. God is giving you a chance. Receive it today and you will never regret in your life. Are you there? You want to receive the Lord Jesus as your Savior? Raise up your hand. Raise up your hand. Raise up your hand. Raise up your hand and receive the Lord as your Savior today. As I'm speaking tonight, I know that people who are numbered and you don't feel, you're, you, you feel that 
You're not ready to leave RTR. You're not ready to face what is waiting out there. I pray in the name of Jesus that the power of the Holy Spirit come upon you and reveal himself to you. You shall see a clear way before you in the name of Jesus. Tonight, there's some people who will see dreams that are very specific. You will see a clear way before you. A way shall be formed in front of your eyes. And be careful to record that dream in the name of Jesus. It has something to do with your future in the name of Jesus. Right here in this meeting, there's somebody who is getting disconnected from a bad relationship. Something that has sucked away in your life. And you feel so helpless, you cannot move away from it. In the name of Jesus, I proclaim that that bondage ends tonight. In the name of Jesus, God will give you the boldness of a lion. And you will face your oppressor and tell them to get out of your way. In the name of Jesus, the Lord shall give you the words to speak. There are people in our midst right here. And somebody, I don't know why this keeps on coming, but I'm speaking in this area of my room. There's somebody who is so touched because of what is taking place in their mother's lives. Somebody's mother. I declare in the name of Jesus. The power that raised Jesus from the dead. Let it flow tonight and touch that woman right now in the name of Jesus. From head to toe, I declare restoration. Restoration. Restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. There are people who are in our midst tonight. You are saved, but you have never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Jesus told his disciples, do not go out of Jerusalem until you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Because without the Holy Spirit, you cannot do anything for God. It is so important to receive the power of the Holy Spirit. And I want you to raise up your hand. I'm going to make a short prayer. The power of God is going to flow into you right now. Even as you go back to your hostels, you will be speaking in new tongues. You will be a different person. Boldness shall feel like never before in the name of Jesus Christ. Raise up your hand and make it. As I pray, as I make it, when you're seated, raise up your hand. I want to declare the power of the Holy Spirit upon you in the name of Jesus. Right now, start speaking to God. Everybody in the hall, start praying in the name of Jesus. I declare in the name of Jesus that the power of the Holy Spirit flows freely in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the manifestation of the power of the Holy Spirit right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Put your hands down. Immediately after this meeting. All of you who have raised up your hands, want you to come quickly after the meeting and see me. We will pray together and take it further from there in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah.